Grab a word of prayer and I'd like to preach to you a message entitled, Dare to be a Daniel. Dare to be a Daniel. Father in heaven, I pray, take the word of God and put it to the hearts of the people. Lord, I am nothing and you are everything. Father, you've shown me this week how, how so true that is. And Lord, I thank you for your mercy and your grace. And I thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your kindness. Lord, be pleased. This, we pray, dear Lord, that you would open eyes. I pray you'd speak to families. This may be a day for great conviction. I ask, Lord, that it would be a day of bringing fathers and sons back together, fathers and daughters, of bringing husbands and wives together, of humbling fathers, of humbling mothers, of humbling children. And I pray when it's all said and done, the word of God, Lord, that is from your very heart would be lifted high, and I pray Jesus would be lifted high, in whose name we pray, amen. There are four great reasons that I'm in the morning and how do I go to bed at night. These decisions are important, it's important because of these decisions or these reasons that I be a man, the man of the house, and that I walk with God. Let me list these reasons for you in order. Number one, Abigail. Number two, Andrew. A child that's gonna have trouble the entire life because I don't have light bulbs. So I stopped <laughs> on the way to the hospital. <laughs> Get some lollipops. And I went inside the convenience store, wait for their lollipop, bring the lollipops and put it there. And the lady's watching me. I said, you see out there? My wife's in And thinking about uh, how he must just pray as the Lord. You know, a, a daughter serving God, another daughter on the mission field. Highly, I don't want to inflate him, but highly dependent on his example as a daddy. Highly. Let me say to every father and grandfather and uncle and brother and every man here today, the Lord calls you to be a, a godly man of character, a man of spiritual backbone, a man of faith, a man of obedience to God and a man of obedience to prayer. He calls you to be a man like Daniel. This is a very high calling. It's an honorable calling. It's a noble calling. It's a, it's a calling that every man in here, whether you're married or not or whatever, have children or not, that you should ascend to being a godly man, a desirous man. Anybody can be a I picked men that I knew could take a ribbing. So listen, if you're one of their wives and you come up here and say, I, you know, you my you know, husband wrinkly is most well around. I can't believe you do that. You get all offended or whatever. Just get me back later. All right? Don't get mad. Get even. All right? Okay. Before I begin, I want to squarely condemn the popular opinion of fathers today. There is a, a, a Homer Simpson mentality out there that dad is a doofus, that uh, he's ignorant and he's old fashioned and he's backwards and he's out of touch and he can't understand his children's culture and he isn't as swift as mom. That may be true, okay? Or, or that he's a poor authority figure or whatever. This picture is a fellow who falls to tell you. Dads fall asleep at will because they spend their entire life and their entire days putting food on your table and working faithfully at some job that he probably really doesn't like but does it for you so that you can have a roof over your head and you can have food in your belly. Concerning him being old fashioned, he has forgotten more than you'll ever know. <laughs> He's been through relationships and love lives and friendships and concerning dating, he's been there, done that, and you're proof that he was successful. <laughs> Stand in awe of your dad. He's the man. Concerning culture, at your age, he could grease his hair and peg his pants and wear his penny loafers and roll his sleeves and fit, fit, flip his collar with the best of them. Now he has graduated and transcended culture and style. And he is an icon of history. <laughs> See him and be in awe of his advancement and worry that you'll never attain his transcendentalation. That is a word, look it up. Concerning being tech savvy, in his day he was on top of his world. He could replace a, an alternator, rebuild a Briggs Stratton's engine, skin a buck, lay a roof, double clutch, fix the plumbing before you ever a gleam in your mother's eye. And wives, don't lose grew up. And my mother played the biblical role of the home, of letting my dad be the leader and the decider. And she didn't disrespect him when she was just with girlfriends and what a, what a louse he was and what he should be doing and this he doing. No, she respected what he did do. 
She respected that he worked hard and sometimes more than one job and put food on our table and allowed her to stay home and rear the children. She, he re, he, she respected him for going out and sometimes my father did not have good jobs. My mother babysat children and her, her income always went to uh, buying the groceries. That's what she did. That's, that's just how we lived. And my father, he, he paid for everything else. But my mother always re revered my father. And there was no question in our mind uh, that, that uh, dad was to be respected. Daniel was a man that never married or had children. That opportunity was not his choice. It was stolen away from him when he was taken captive and made a eunuch for the rest of his life. But this godly man, this man of great integrity, is exactly what every man in this church needs to be. The songwriter Philip Bliss wrote it correctly when he wrote, Dare to be a Daniel. This morning I want to show you fathers, how to be a godly daddy like Daniel. And I want to challenge all of our men to dare to be a Daniel. So take your Bibles and turn to Daniel chapter 1 and verse number 1. Daniel chapter 1 and verse number 1. If you have an old Schofield Bible, it's on page 898. 898. I couldn't find it this morning. It scared me, scared me that I was going to have, be up here. And It's Psalms, Proverbs, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel to help you. For those that are dyslexic, it is revelation, and then back hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, little g. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God, little g. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the masters of, the, of his eunuch, the master of his eunuchs, or the prince, as we'll see later, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel, and of the, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. You may be seated. The background, the date is approximately 604 B.C. The great ruler Nebuchadnezzar for two years lay siege against Je uh, King Jehoiakim of Judah. Imagine it, okay? Nebuchadnezzar coming to destroy King Jehoiakim of Judah in the city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem was destroyed. And one of Nebuchadnezzar's uh, plans was this. What he was going to do, his prized possessions, he was going to take all of the kind of nobility or those uh, older teenage boys that seemed to show a lot of pro uh, promise in mental capacity and leadership and ability. He was going to bring them back and he was going to train them uh, as slaves, as servants, but train, him in all the sci train them in all the sciences or whatever to be his advisors or, or princes below him uh, in his own land. One of these men was Daniel. Daniel was a little bit different than all the rest. This is where we begin to learn why God put this story in the Word of God for you men. One of the first things that happened is that they were given Babylonian food and wine to drink for three years. The command would have been against this being strong drink. You see, Daniel couldn't eat that food because God said in the Jewish law that they weren't to eat certain types of food. Uh, unclean animals, they called them, and not to drink strong drink, and no doubt this violated these commands. The meat may also have, have been as choice cuts offered to the little G's, <laughs> the little gods before this. It was disobedience, according to Leviticus chapter 11, verse 44 through 47, to eat these animals. Of all the young men, only Daniel spoke up. Imagine among thousands, if today Nebuchadnezzar swings in here and he grabs all of our young men, all right? Only one spoke up. All these men grew up Orthodox Jews. There was no choice in these days. They were all taught the commands. They all knew what was right and what was wrong. Only one man, Daniel, takes a stand. Of all these men, only Daniel spoke up. Some followed, but only Daniel was the one who spoke up. Number one, men, to be a godly man, you must not be influenced by what others are doing around you. Notice in verse number six, the Bible says, Now among these were children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name Belteshazzar, unto Hananiah of Shadrach, unto Mishael of Meshach, and unto Azrael of uh, Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart, that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested the prince of eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Notice the first two words, please, of verse number 8. But Daniel. He just mentioned other men. And compromising unbelievers and compromising believers around you. It's not for you to follow men. I don't care what your personality. It's for you to be a Daniel. 
But Daniel purposed in his heart. He's not going to defile himself. And he asked, he requested, I don't want to do this. Daniel didn't look around at what everyone was, else was doing. He didn't take a vote. How many of you guys think we ought to eat this? Didn't do that. He didn't uh, write a book or read a book, excuse me, on uh, whether or not you should eat the, the king's, I don't know, you know, author so-and-so, doctor so-and-so, pastor so-and-so says that. He didn't do that. He knew God's command, and it was enough for him to determine what God had said. And there better be some men in this congregation that say, I'm going to get back to the Bible and search the word for what I should do, not what whoever Joe Schmo Christian is doing across the aisle from me. Men, we're not to be influenced by what other men are doing around us to determine the course of our families and the, the course of our Christian life. We're to be looking at the book. We're to, we are to be seeking God's word on the issue. And we live in a day, even in Christianity, where this word is smeared clear across by Dr. Spo and so and Pastor Snow, so and so smears it this way. And Brother so and so and Pastor Mrs. so and so smears it this way. And when all this smearing goes on, the men say, Who should I believe? Go to the book. The book's not smeared. The book is exactly what God wants you to have. <clears throat> Go to the book. It is following God's word that according to uh, part, party mentality of your co-workers or acquaintances. God called you to obey him. Stop trying to blend in and be comfortable. You say, well, Pastor, this is what I like to do. I like to get the conservative idea on the issue, and I like to get the liberal idea on the issue, and I decide to be moderate. What's that mean? Don't be moderate. Be biblical. Told me that he didn't think very much of his wife. I didn't get much time to talk to him. I told him it's too bad. I told him I could help him if he wanted. But uh, didn't have much for it at all. You could tell he's bitter, angry, didn't like. Listen, other men at your workplace may not honor your wife. Be a Daniel. Some guy back here saying, this is Father's Day, not Mother's Day. You already said that. Okay. Other men around you may not be servants to other people. They may be prideful and arrogant and try to be the big peacock that lifts up his plumes. I am the man. You be a servant to others. You be a Daniel like the Lord Jesus Christ was. Man, sometimes the temptation to follow the world comes from the unsaved, but sometimes it may come with, within your very own family. You must be the spiritual backbone of your house. God tells you to be. Do you know in the judgment seat of Christ, who is going to be looked in the eyes about what your family did? It's going to be your wife. House, hey, anybody taking role? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. Let me tell you, Joshua was not arrogant. He was not militant. He was militant, but not in that way. He wasn't ugly. I don't think he beat around his wife. He better not have. I know he didn't because he was a man of God. He didn't, he didn't uh, throw the day or under the word of God. You know, what I'm saying to you is stand your ground, daddies. Stand, stand it lovingly, but stand your ground. You don't ever disown your children, but you must stand your ground. I'm afraid I'll drive them away. I'm afraid I'll, I'll, I'll make a, situ a wall between us. Stand your ground. Stand your ground in your marriage and your life. We must not see this story as some faraway tale that happened 2,600 years ago with unreal people. No, Daniel was a man with the same passions and struggles as yourself, but he didn't make excuses. He made good. There's some great excuses that Daniel could have used to justify why he didn't obey God. If you put this yourself in this position, but Daniel obeyed anyhow. He could have easily used excuses, and we would have justified medically to become a eunuch who would never marry or have a family. There was a lot of darkness in his life. You say, where is God? Daniel could have easily said, where is God? Why should I obey God? Where's God? Would you be saying, amen, this is great. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Come on. Don't be super pious. Most men in this room, including myself, would have had a very hard time figuring out what God was doing. Would you be questioning God? What was allowing your life? Where was God? Was he the God of the big G instead of the little G? Most of us would struggle with bitterness towards God, not standing with purpose to obey God in a strange land. Here's a great example to us, men. When darkness or confusion comes to your life, have faith. Trust God. Amen. Don't let the good and follow the word. Trust him and stiff, stiffen the backbone of your faith. You know what fires me up? Women that have more faith than men. 
every church I've ever been to. It's not like I got a faith meter. <laughs> but it shows up, doesn't it? Who turns out for mostly for prayer to women? Who, uh, you got these things that you want to do, minister in the church. It's a bunch of women. I hate that. That's, that's not right. Is that right? Where do the men have the faith? The man, the man is on his calculator for the 18th time, crunching the numbers, you know, while they're waiting. You know, they're just a bunch of, bunch of guys, all right? You know, most of them, when they said, you know, you're going to get this good meat, you're going to get this Budweiser, yeah, it's a party! Not Daniel. Not Daniel. Daniel, diso, or excuse me, Daniel obeyed God despite danger. Note at verse number 10, notice what it says. And the prince of eunuch, the eunuch said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king, who hath appointed your meat and drink. For why should he see your faces worse liking than the children which are of your sword? Then shall he make me endanger my head to the king. This is pretty much danger. You know, lopping off your head is not a good thing. There's a lot of danger involved here, all right? I fear my lord the king, the prince says. By taking a stand for God, Daniel was jeopardizing done what he was going to do. You know, couldn't he have just found water of his own? Couldn't he have just, you know, you know acted like he was drinking and it fall down on a grave? Couldn't he have just done something else? Why do you have to make a big scene? Sounds like that, uh, a lot of scene in, with Christianity today. Why do you take a big old stand for God? That's not loving. Why do you got to stand up and say that? Why don't you just try to get along? Daniel was willing to take a stand for what was right. Why didn't he just do things quietly? Away with the pussyfooting generation that is afraid to stand up for God. Where are the warriors of old? Where are the warriors in this church? The men that say there is right and there is wrong and I will stand for right publicly. Where are the Daniels? You must see that Daniel had a greater king, the Lord God. And I sometimes I ask myself, I feel like that I was born and some of you men feel like you are born in the, the wrong generation. Right? I'm not bloodthirsty, but there is a generation, there has been generations that had to shed some blood for what was right, to have the liberty that we have today, both in our country and in our churches. There were some men that burnt on the stake because they said salvation is by faith through grace and not by works. There were some men that says, I, like Roger Williams, I will not, a Baptist priest, and there's no comparison between this world's danger and obeying the Lord. Don't fear them, Jesus said, that they can hurt the body, but him that can, uh, has the power to send both body and soul to hell. Fear Almighty God. Amen. Don't fear your employer because you want to do right and you won't lie on the contract. Don't fear your team right now. And yet Dr. Charian has one of the most visible Christian works anywhere in India. And he is a target for terrible tragedy and terrorism and whatever. There used to be some men of God that would stand up no matter what in their neighborhoods and in their churches and in their families. There are Daniels today that obey God and don't make excuses. Daniel obeyed God despite delight. Come on, he's 17 years old. What were you doing when you were 17 years old? I can't talk about it, Pastor. <laughs> Me either. When I was 17 years old, I didn't have a brain in my head. Whatever was fun, we did. How many of you guys were like that? 17 years old, whatever. Yeah, none of you are going to admit it. All right, wake up, wake up, all right? 17 years old, I was just worried about what the next fun thing to do was. All right, that's all, all that, excuse me, all that mattered were cars and girls. <laughs> Shrimp and, and uh, ham steaks and roast beef. Daniel says, I'm not going to. I'm not going to disobey God. I'm going to obey God, although this food would certainly be delightful. He did not disobey God, even though it would have been delightful. Imagine the temptation to dampen his homesickness with a little wine, with a little strong wine, a little alcohol that would have dampened that heart. Say, what happened to my mother? What's happened to my uncle? What's happened to my nephews? And what happened to these guys? Imagine how tempting it would have been just to take up the bottle. Listen, man, there's an awful lot of sin in this world that for a season would be delightful to you. 
The man at your work may come and brag about it. You flip the TV and it's on every channel. You know you're saved, but what would it hurt? Just have a little bit of pleasure and delight of the king's meat for just a little while. Just one little social sip of bubbly with friends. How can that hurt anything? God calls you to be a Daniel. Sin is delightful, but there is a more delighting thing. That is pleasing the one who died for your sins on the cross, who gave of his life and laid everything down for you. Are you going to delight on his behalf in your sin? Despite what he's done for you? What small thing is it for you to sacrifice a little sin for a season in order to bring him pleasure? Um, so wrongly teach. Look at your Bible, specifically in your New Testament, and read the wonderful commands about be holy for he is holy. The New Testament about coming away from evil and unrighteousness on every hand, of walking uprightly and godly and being a phenomenal example in this world. That's New Testament. New Testament. Be a Daniel. I can't be the spiritual, a spiritual leader of this church. Be a Daniel. I can't bring my family to every church service. Be a Daniel. I can't read the Word of God and pray every day. Be a Daniel. I can't minister or soul win to the lives of other people. Be a Daniel. I can't be pure and amputate evil influence in my home. Be a Daniel. It's not that you can't. It's that you won't. If you've not gotten serious about this area, you're swimming and drowning in mediocrity Christian living. You are a professional C-plus Christian. I'm not telling you to be perfect. I'm telling you, have that as your goal and shoot for it. You'll never hit perfection, but I guarantee you, if you never aim for it, you ain't, you ain't will be close. Prove him. What he's really saying is, prove God. Prove my God. I'm going to obey God. You prove him. Let us do this. And let's see how God allows things to turn out. Faith is believing that God is going to do exactly what he said he would do. Faith is not some hair brain scheme that you think up and then expect God to support. No, faith is acting upon what he has already said in the word of God. When you can stand on a principle of the word of God and say, I am doing this because of this verse, because of this principle, because of this illustration, and you know that God will honor that. That is faith. That is taking a stand like Daniel. Daniel could not lose he was obeying God. And you cannot lose when you obey God, men. Amen. If you go out on a limb risking something in obedience to God, you will never lose in the end. Men, we are great in our lives about talking about trusting God. But are we putting it to the test? Are we proving Him? Listen to me. If there's nothing to risk, it's not faith. If there's nothing to risk, it's not faith. Faith has in it the definition that something will be at risk. See, Daniel knew that God had said, don't eat that. God had said he would bless obedience. So Daniel stood on that. He acted on that. He said, give us pulse, grain, or these are veg a vegetable slop to eat. Please don't think that somebody here will think, well, that's a well-planned vegetarian diet. And see, what happened is his amino acids, they conflicted with his proteins and his whatever. Listen. It wasn't the pulse that made him fatter and, fa and fairer. It was the Lord God Almighty. And this is very clear in here. Man, I want to pound something into my heart and your heart as leaders of our whole. heard it because I give the glory to the Lord God that we start out the ministry making $12,000 a year. I'm a young man. You can't put gas in your SUV for $12,000 a year right now. Right. I was just dumb enough to trust God. And to be very frank with you, I didn't even think of it. We just did it. God honored us, didn't he? God has been so very good. I Blessed be his holy name today. A lot of folks in the overflow. A lot of folks that will hear this later on on the web. Listen to me. The whole thing about Jesus Christ is a decision that every man specifically on this Father's Day and every woman needs to make. The Lord Jesus endured that to the cross so that he might save you by coming to him and giving you salvation as a free gift. Have you ever received the gift? You know, you don't just kind of float into Christ uh, being saved. You know, you, you, you can't, like, be married into it. You know that you can't, like, know somebody who's a Christian that makes you a Christian. It is a point in time, every one of us in our life, just like so many illustrations and acts, 
of a person making a decision to receive Jesus Christ. If you're here today and you do not have Jesus Christ, I plead that God would give you eyes to see Amen. and that at the end of the service you would run to him and say, I want, I, I want to accept what you did for me on the cross. Say, I want Jesus to save me. Jesus, please save me. I'm a sinner. I don't deserve. I deserve the wrath of God. For you men, I leave you with this. To be a Daniel, you must not be influenced by what others are doing around you. You must to be a Daniel. You must determine that you will choose obedience instead of excuses. And to be a Daniel, you must live by faith, not only talking. Philip Bliss said, standing by a purpose true, heeding God's command, honor them, the faithful few. All hail to Daniel's band. Dare to be a Daniel. Dare to stand alone. Dare to have a purpose firm. And dare to make it known. Would you please bow your heads?